Thank you everyone for tuning in to Bike Smarts monthly educational series. This topic is bike lock, bike locking, ways and tips and resources to keep your bike safe and in your hands because I'm pretty sure you spent a pretty penny on it or maybe it was gifted to you and you want it to stay in your possession. So my name is Deltrice Daniels and I'm the membership and outreach manager here at Bike Cleveland and I have a few um, housekeeping tips right here to share with you, which is welcome. You can say hello in the chat box down below. If you are uh, participating in this and you are moving mobile, if you are in the car driving, please don't do all this stuff because we don't want you to get into a car accident while you're driving. So just listen, but welcome and say hello in the chat box. Um, and I'm gonna have to read this backwards because that's how the Zoom is. What's that say? Oh, self mute yourself, that's what it says. Um, so if you don't have any background noise and you wanna participate anytime, you know, go ahead and unmute yourself. But for the main part, this training is being recorded for future. So we would kindly request that you self mute yourself. Um, you, I'm gonna be doing a few polls. So please go ahead and answer the polls. And chat in the chat box if you would like to, and meet a new friend if you want uh, here in Cleveland. All right, um, this topic is ways to keep your bike safe and locked up. So I'm gonna start off with sharing my screen first. And welcome to Vice Cleveland Virtual Bike Smarts class. And it's, now that's the same thing. Um, we are Bike Cleveland. We are your Northeast Ohio region's bicycle advocacy organization, which, which what that means is when the conversation turns to bikes, we would like to be, make sure we are included in the conversations to ensure that bike lanes are put in and safe education such as this is being presented and offered to the community and just keeping everyone engaged so to keep everyone safe and happy. We are located at 3000 Bridge Avenue on the west side, about two blocks over from the west side market. And that's our side window and we are all about bikes. That particular bike is our blender bike. So once, perhaps next year, once all this pandemic is over, we do rent out this uh, blender bike to organizations and, and people, I mean, organizations and people, well, mainly organizations, but there's people and organizations. And uh, they use it as an outreach tool or as a way to generate when they're doing events out into the you know community events so they use the blender bike the blender is not on it right now the carafe but just picture the carafe on the back and you ride your bike you ride the bike and it makes a smoothie if you want okay so i'm gonna get i'm gonna share with you this is just a few screenshots i don't know if you can see it on your screen but because i'm sharing my screen there is you can move in the middle you can move the size that's what i wanted to show you in this you can move the size to make the uh the like you can where you can be all or just one spot or you can move it so that's just what i wanted to share with you right there and now i want to get started with a fun part again uh, a a icebreaker i like to play this game called one gotta go which just means that one of these images one of these things gotta go like for the rest of your life you don't want to deal with it anymore you can't deal with it um, cause one gotta go, which I'm going to share with you. A is the internet. You can't, you, you, the internet's gotta go. B is your mobile phone. Gotta go. C is streaming, such as your Netflix or stuff like that. It's gotta go. Or D is a hot shower. Which one of these four items, one of those gotta go? I know it's weird. You don't want neither of them to go. You want them all, but... That is the fun part of these games. One of these, if you had to choose, got to go, which one of these would go? I would, I oh, this is such a tough one. I, I probably would choose C for me streaming because I don't even do streaming right now. So that's an easy choice for me. But for everyone else, let's go ahead and give you about uh, five more seconds to um, participate. And then I'm going to share the results right here. 
it's a tie, really, between V and C, between your mobile cell phone you could do without or streaming you could do without. So that is, I love to see how people answer. Uh, one thing I mentioned in your email that you got beforehand was bring some paper and a pencil. So one quick game I wanted to, if you have your pen and paper, is to name five, which name five bicycle bicycle um bicycle brands bicycle bike brands and i got oh wait i gotta do this close still gotta change the question okay there we go you can use the chat box if you didn't bring any papers i'm just curious to know what bicycle brand names do you know i'm not gonna say them because i'm gonna wait till everyone is finished but just name can you name five bicycle brand names um, if you are at your house and your bikes are inside your house, that could be a clue if you look. Yeah, I can look over here and see one. Um, let's see here. What's these buttons? Oh, chat. Okay, there we go. Look at the chat. <laughs> okay, good. I like reusing the chat. It's really cool. All right. I'm going to go ahead and give you a few more seconds on this polling. Let me close this out. I don't know if y'all can see my screen, too in polling. Most of you said yes, you can name five. So let's see, we have Kestrel. I've never heard of Kestrel bike. That's why I like these things. You can learn something new every day. Uh, Trek, Cannondale, Raleigh, and Schwinn. We got Jameis, those type of bikes. Cannondale, Specialized, A Giant, Felt, and Scott. Yes, those type of bikes. And from youth, we all remember bikes when we were little. Huffy, of course, and Schwinn bikes. So those are just a few Quick, simple games I wanted to share with you before I get started into the content. Oh wait, there's one more button popped up. Hold on, I want to share. Oh yeah, Raleigh CCM. What's the CCM? A Trek, a Cannondale, and a Solo Rock. Okay, two other bikes I've never heard of before, but that is quite all right. A Solo Rock, never heard of that. And a CCM. Reminds me of Crit Cleveland Critical Mass, but I'm quite sure that's not what you're talking about. <laughs> so, um, so uh, and Fuji, yes, yeah, salsa. That's another uh, band brand of bikes. So let me in. Let me close this out, and let me go ahead and get started with the content. Really, what you are here for is how to keep your bike safe. And now, what I'm going to be going doing is going over the League of American Bicycles, their information about um, ways to lock your bike, and just some tips they have for you. Hold on, let me, um, uh, forgot. Okay, because I forgot this is being recorded, so less, less content on the screen is, is better. All right, so first I want to share a story with you. Oh, I should have put this in the poll. You can use your thumbs up. I'm going to be looking, if you see me looking this way, because of the screen is this way, so I can see all over there. So you can give me a thumbs up if you've ever had a bicycle stolen from you before. I'm going to give two thumbs up. Yes, Adam has, um, I have, Teresa has, um, all of, almost all of us have had a bike stolen. And we know the devastation and the, like, oh my goodness, where's my bike? Who stole my bike and why? At least I know I'm saying why. And I want to share uh, this with you. I'm going to share a story with you. Let me change this off. For a quick moment. There we go. Share a story with you. I miss this bike, y'all. This was a bike that was stolen from me, and I miss it. I have a great memory. That's all I have now is pictures from this bike when I did the Five Borough Tour in New York a few years ago, and I really um, miss the bike. Oh, I can't make it big. Okay. I'm trying to see if I can make, make the screen big. I really miss it. And now, I, I, I tell you, I've, lo I've had my bike on the back of my car, in my, on my property, in my driveway, in my house, numerous times without being locked. So I'm like, okay, no one has taken it before. No one's probably going to take it. No one likes my bike, right? Had friends tell me, make sure you lock your bike. I'm like, oh, okay, I'll lock it. You know, like, whatever, I'll lock it until I go back outside on the back of my vehicle and my bike is gone. That was terrible. So 
moral of the story is always, always, always lock your bike, no matter where you at, no matter if you just run to the store inside two minutes really quick, you're inside your house, you are uh, have it on the back of your car, uh, anywhere, you want to always, always lock it. And so what type of lock do you think we should have? Well, any type of lock, really, any, any lock is good lock. Is a, any lock, wait, how am I trying to say this? You, you don't wanna have no lock, right? Any lock is better than no lock. That's what I'm trying to say. Any lock is better than no lock. So if, if this is all you have is a cable flimsy lock, um, I suppose you know this is all you have. You can use it. This is another type of lock, which is still a cable, but just maybe a little bit more, um, okay just a little bit more durable with keys. Now again, I know I said any lock is better than no lock. This is technically a lock. It's like a zip tie lock. Now I don't know if you actually want to use this on your bicycle, but again, any lock is better than no lock. Um, as I mentioned, that's like a zip tie. This is an actual zip tie. I don't know what really is gonna lock up, but if that's all you have, that's all you have. Now this is like a real zip tie, but it's a special Kev Kevlar type lock. And I'll talk more about this in detail later on. And as I mentioned, as you've seen in the picture, then you have your handy dandy U lock. Now, oftentimes, majority of the times, everyone, bicycle shops, retailers, uh, bicycle riders, anybody will recommend a handy dandy U lock. They come in various sizes, like a pocket size that almost can fit in your back pocket. And then I've seen it almost like this long, um, where it locked up like a family of bikes. I was pretty amazed when I saw the family. I was like, oh, that's pretty cool. So any lock is better than no lock, but those are different types of locks that, as you see there. And having a U lock really is the best kind of, of lock. And the reason why I say that is because the person will need to have, they need a grinder to grind it off. They need electricity. Well, I did, I do hear that, hear that grinders do work on battery, but more than likely you need electricity and hopefully they have some safety goggles. So if you picture all that trifactor together, trying to undo a lock, that's pretty suspect and suspicious then that's not their lock. There's not their bike. There's not their lock. So that's why a lot of people really do recommend the U-lock. This is a word lock. This I got from Marks. I don't know if you could zoom in. Oh, I can zoom in. Look at that. I learned something new every zoom. I can zoom in here. This was $4.99, five bucks, okay, um, because I purchased these from Marks. Now, support your local bicycle shop, and they do have words. They do have a, one you can use a key or a number. So whatever you feel it would be helpful to you so you don't so you won't lose or lock out, then do what's best for you. These were the word ones at uh, Mark, so I picked those up. Now, you often see these ho ho these hoop bike racks around the city. And so this is the proper way to lock up your bike at a hoop rack with a lock. You do notice you don't see a, uh, a lock there. So this is just for demonstration purposes, but you would lock up your bike to the hoop rack horizontal like this. You really wanna have a bike lock in your bike to hit two contact points when you lock it up. And I'll go into more detail about the contact points too, of where the best places to lock your bike. But as you see is you have this hoop rack so you can lock it up. Here's a contact point and here's a, here's a point over here you can, con you can lock it up two contact points. Uh, now, I know right now we don't have the UH bikes out, but pretend like if we did have the UH bikes, you would notice that all the UH bikes, really all the bike share bikes, always have the lock in the rear wheel. And that is one of the best places to lock up your bike. Two places, really. The frame, you wanna lock up your bike in order of importance of, of, um, of order of how much it costs. So the frame is your most valuable asset on the bicycle. So you definitely wanna lock up the frame. Second is your rear wheel because the rear wheel has all of the gears on the back. 
victim feel? I don't know what it was. <laughs> uh, you want to lock, you want to make sure you lock up the uh, rear wheel because that has all the gears. So at least if they steal your wheel, at least you don't have to pay so, so much. Let them steal the front and you can replace the front. So at least you want to lock up the frame and the rear wheel. And here is a picture right here of the frame and the rear wheel and the U-lock right here. So it really doesn't take a lot, that space right there to lock up is really not a lot of space and it's the U-lock fits perfectly to lock up in that space. So where is that? And so here it is again. So I said I'll mention this later and here it is later now. This is one, this is, I, this, I call this a fancy lock. Um, call this a fancy lock because it can fold down. It's called an auto lock and it can fold down. Look how small this lock can fold down and it can fit in the rear of your jersey pocket. And I have used this. This is a, now this right here is a lock that I definitely would use when I would be road cycling. Because of course, when you're road cycling, you want to be as light as possible just because you, you're road cycling. You don't want to be all heavy. You don't want to carry heavy stuff. So this fits perfectly in the rear uh, jersey pocket and it's great. However, uh, people think that it's plastic. So as you can see, someone thought it was a fake uh, lock and they tried to cut it. They were unsuccessful because they could not get through, even though it's coated with plastic. I don't know if you can see there, um, but it is, it's uh, metal still on the inside and they, they was not successful. Now auto locks do have a guarantee that if you show them your, if you show them your, uh, oh, I lost it, hold on really quick. If you show them images proof that someone attempted to steal your bike and they were unsuccessful, how come I, I clicked on it? And it was unsuccessful that they, if they have some type of guarantee, it's like um, maybe 50% off your next purchase or so. I, obviously you see I have not taken advantage of the guarantee yet. It doesn't say that it expires and it doesn't say that they need proof of payment either because I definitely won't be able to find the receipt. But at least I know that I can, I can upgrade and get a replacement bicycle lock if needed. They do make all types of other things as they do make some U-locks as well. But again, like I said, I really like this one because I was able to put it in my jersey pocket. And I like that, to put it in my jersey pocket. All right, keep pushing the wrong button, my bad. Uh, there it is. So now I have that. Now you see this bicycle. This would be a bicycle. I would, I would definitely lock it up in a different way because I don't know if you've seen bicycles that have been out. A lot of times if you, they've maybe been out in the, in the elements for a very long time and everything is stripped. The seat is taken, the wheels are taken, the lights are taken, everything is taken. So this particular owner of this bike could have everything taken because he's only, he or she has only locked up the frame right here. People, this is a quick release. I mean, zoom in, yeah, zoom in. Quick release, we know about quick releases, which is quick release. Boop, pop open and that seat is gone. Some seats cost more than a bike. For example, uh, what is the name of those bicycle seats? Um, well, I can't think right now, but they cost, they cost who? Saddle. Brooks Saddle. Yes, thank you. Brooks Saddle. Yes, those if you are familiar with Brooks Saddles or not familiar with Brooks Saddles, they are one leather seats for your bicycle. And you definitely do not want someone to steal your $100 plus $200 Brooks Saddle. So you definitely want to keep it locked. That you don't want a quick release on it, all, on it at all. I don't think they even make quick releases on for it. I don't know. But all a person needs to steal your bike is 
Hold on. All the person needs to seal your bike is dun, 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 a cutter and some tools. Because they can just open it up. They can just use it, take your seat off, right? Or like I mentioned, if you have one of these cheap locks, it's good, no lock, any lock is better than no lock, but still you have one of these cheap locks, these bolt cutters, they, I'm sure they make them bigger bolt cutters. I don't have any because I don't go around cutting off bolts often. So there's no need for me to purchase one, but they have them and they can just fit in a book bag, fit in the back of your bag, go and it's like quick snip, ride off and roll and roll and roll. And once someone is on your bike rolling, your feet cannot catch up and chase them down. They're just, they're gone. They start turning corners, they are gone. So you wanna make sure you keep your bike to yourself. And so these are some tips we wanna share with you to keep them to yourself. So remember to lock up, he, he or she did lock up the frame, but you wanna lock up the rear wheel too. Now if you have space, if you're, chain is long enough to go through the frame, the rear wheel and the front wheel, do by all means do that also. Anything that's going to um, prevent them from, so and the thing is too, when a thief comes up to the bike, they're gonna assess it really quick. They're gonna look at their surroundings and assess it really quick and assess to see the value of it. So oftentimes too, that's why some people may have a beater bike because they, it's just a beater bike. They don't care if someone steals it, they still don't want someone to steal it. They may not have all that extra fancy components because it may look like to a thief, oh, this bike isn't nothing, it's not worth it. And then too, when you have your bicycles, your bike locked up, again, you just really want to deter them because if a thief wants your bike, they're gonna take your bike by any means necessary. So they're gonna find out a way. And so you really want to deter them too. So if you got all types of locks and bells and whistles and everything going together, they're gonna to look at your bike and they're like, okay, go into the next one. And that's what you want to then to, for them to go into the next one. Now, if you don't have a really long cable, as I mentioned, so that you can lock up all the components, with the quick releases on, on a lot of the wheels, this is one of the purpose of, or advantages of using a quick release right here is that you can remove the front wheel off of your bike and put bring it over to the back and still you have your your u lock which is still locking up the frame and now both wheels together and that this nice trek bike and as you see they have taken off all of anything extra accessories off their bikes you don't see any lights you see a water bottle cage but you don't see any lights, you don't see a saddlebag because I don't bring my saddlebag in here. But a lot of the times, you know, your saddlebag is just either Velcro onto your seat or uh, clipped onto your seat. And again, if it's just easy to put on, it's just easy to take off. So you wanna take all your stuff with you. It may be a pain to constantly remove your items, but it's more of a pain if you have to replace them with your money. Now, I know you're wondering, Okay, let me go. You know, you're wondering, okay, now these are all great pictures. We show, I've shown you pictures of how to lock up your bike with a bike rack. What if there is no bike rack, such as this right here? You don't see a bike rack and you still wanna lock up your bike. Or if you're with your friend, you can lock up your bike together to each other. Now that will just, again, deter someone. Now they have to pick up two bikes and try to transport them. That's a little bit more challenging to pick up two bikes than it is to pick up one. So that's one thing, you kind of like, it's almost like a TP with your bike together. You can lean together and you can lock them together. And again, it's just gonna deter the thief from stealing your bike. Um, as I mentioned, you always wanna lock up your bike even if it's on your car. Uh, I keep, <laughs> you know now, Life lessons are the best lessons, correct? And so now there is a cable lock just permanently on my bike rack. Yeah, it's permanently on my bike rack. So I have no reason, no one shall never, well, no one shall not steal my bike again off my bike rack, off my vehicle, but it stays on there now. And when you're, this is a quick tip if you are driving, and you know your front wheel may be moving around a lot if you're going on the freeway. So you just like can take something and secure your front wheel to the frame so it can't be moving around while you're driving on the freeway. But yes, lock up your bike all the time. Basically, if your butt is not on the seat, lock it. 
That means also, now some of these fancy racks, this is a Sarah's rack. Sarah's is a United States uh, manufactured bicycle rack. So that is good, made right here in the United States. And they have, so I'm gonna show this to you right here. They have bike locks built into their racks. You're paying for it, but again, you're paying for peace of mind and security that your bike is safe. Now I still would recommend locking it because these cables, they are probably maybe about the same thickness as one of these type cables. So if someone has a really strong cable cutter, they can still cut it. And I have seen stories of people, of bikes still getting cut and stolen off the back of people's vehicles, even when it's locked up. So still use that again, it's gonna deter people, but still use it, use another lock if you need to, because I definitely do. In your house, in your garage, lock them in your basement lock them especially in your garage or especially in your basement really literally anywhere you want to lock your bike and i've had her stories of reports especially with the, everyone's at home now during quarantine you may be doing some yard work um and so you, you got your garage door up you are doing yard work um you're in the back mowing the grass you come back and someone has taken your bike off the rack and rolled down the street with it so lock it at all times. And I've seen people have taken bikes out of the basements um, and rode on with them. And so again, if your butt is not on the seat, you just want to lock it all the time. Even if you have a whole bunch of bikes, doesn't matter, get your cable, lock them up. Cause people will, if they want your bike, they will steal it and they will do anything as possible to try to steal it. Now I know you're probably wondering, okay, now I talked about bike racks. So you can lock it up to a specific you know, fixed object. Oh, let me back up a little bit because I forgot about that. I showed you hoop racks. Um, you can lock it up to a pole. I wouldn't recommend locking your bike up to a tree, but you may, mainly you want to make sure that when you do lock your bike, you're not able to lift it up off of the item and keep on going. It's still with it being locked because people can do that. So you want to make sure when it's locked on a pole, it's not like a short pole like this, where someone can just still lift it up. So like a tall pole, a utility line pole, something like that. So like I said, talked about bicycles being locked up at a fixed location, talked about locking your bicycle with a friend because you know the, you can lock them together. But what if you're by yourself? What do you do when you're by yourself and you gotta go <laughs> and you don't know where to lock your bike at or there's no place to lock up your bike so it's like in the middle of the woods? Well, you would just lock it up to itself. That's the, really the best thing to do. Again, you still would lock it up to the lock up the, the rear wheel to the frame if your cable is long enough lock it up to the front wheel if it's just a u-lock lock it up to the um to the uh rear wheel in the frame and it's just gonna again deter people but at least it'll give you a little bit of a peace of mind because it's going to take a little bit more because they can't just roll it nor can they just um uh hop on it and roll because it's locked you can even go to the extreme. If you think you're going to be someplace where you're going to be a while um, and you can't bring it indoors and there's no place to lock it, two things. One, contact Bike Cleveland so we can kind of get the organization some bike racks. Or two, and two, um, maybe take the air off the tires because again, they, they won't be able to roll it. And again, it'll look like a bike that's just looked like crap and they don't want it. So um, lock it up to itself. Like I said, if you're going to be somewhere a long time and you're not able to bring it in, and if you have access to pump your tires back up, don't take the air off your tires and leave it flat if you don't have no way to put it back up. Put, put, put the air back in. That would be defeating the purpose, and you can't ride it either. But these are just some tips. Again, make sure you take off all the accessories off your bike and um, do it like that. Okay. All right. Let me stop sharing it real quick before I go to the next one. And let me check the comments, the chats real quick. Does anyone have any questions? Let me read these real quick. Uh, oh, someone did cut, the, I'm sure, okay, someone did cut the auto lock, someone said. Okay, it's cool. There's a, if anyone want to check it out at another time, there's a YouTube video in the chat where there's a video of the auto lock being cut with, with uh, some bolt cutters. So if images like that deter you from, oh yeah, I don't want to use it, then by all means, don't use it. I don't use auto lock anymore. 
I really do use my U lock all the time. And I and I use the other lock that's on the back of my vehicle because I don't want no I don't want no one to steal my bike again because that would be the worst. I already had one bike stolen, didn't have a second bike stolen. It's like didn't you learn your lesson? Like, yeah, I did, but <laughs> okay. So uh, let me go back. So now with, with this technology era, oh, era, a lot of us track our rides with digital platforms, right? Um, Strava is a main platform that you're able to track your rides. Uh, Garmin Connect is another one. So I'll show you those two today, but I'm going to start with Strava first. And what I want to show you with here, and this is something I saw a while ago, a lot of times, Strava is another social platform too. You can make friends on there, you can share pictures and what have you. So a lot of times you may, is you may share pictures of your bikes. You may have a very expensive bike, either way is your bike. Well, if you share your bike on the platform anywhere, and now you and then if you're using it through Strava, um, one thing that can occur is people can know where you live at and come steal your bikes. I know that's a bit extreme, however, it can happen. You don't want it to happen. So this one I wanna show you how you can prevent that from happening. So you can do this on the desktop. If you have the apps on your phone, maybe you go through the browser on your phone, but then you know it's gonna be really tiny. So I would suggest you using the desktop. And so you wanna log in, click onto your settings over here on Strava and click on privacy controls as well. So then, you come up with another, uh, oh, I thought I'd blank that out. See, that's what I get. I'm talking about, <laughs> I'm talking about security features on, on the computer. And I uh, see, I forget to blank out my address. So uh, you'll click on settings, you'll click on privacy controls. And then what happens is you can put in your specific address either your address, your home location, your work location, or any location you really don't want to be a buffer around. I don't know if you heard about the stories about the um, military when they were doing their runs over, I think, I don't know, wherever they were doing their runs at, and people saw where they were doing their runs because of this, because of this situation like this. So what you want to do is put those privacy controls in your, in your settings. So let me go here and I surely thought I had I had blocked out my uh, blocked out my address, but I see I did not. So I'm not going to show you that screen again. So now this is this one. So that you can so you can set it up again. You have a buffer between. There's different uh, eighths of a per diameter, and you can get bigger and bigger and bigger. So it's up to you. But I will say this: if you use your tracking apps to uh, monitor your Mm, your mileage stuff like that it doesn't take away it's just the public can't see so if i leave my house and i ride my bike for one mile but my buffer is set up for a half a mile radius you on the public will see that i rode my bike for a half a mile because of the the difference but for me i you i would see i rode the entire mile so it's a little bit of a of a settings there and the same thing with garmin connect now what you would do here is again you will go to your settings here go to the account settings and you will click on privacy settings so you'll come up with the privacy settings right here and so you would scroll down i can't scroll down to the screenshot right now you will scroll down and you will see privacy zones so you again you will put in the zone put in the address and you can make the make the zone you can scroll it, make it bigger or smaller, depending on how much of a buffer zone you want. And so people can't see like where you specifically live at or where you specifically work at or where you specifically do whatever you do at. People won't be able to see it because you set this up prior. So those are some tips to keep you safe in digital realm. realm. And now these are all things to do beforehand and this is another option to do also beforehand. It's also good to know to take inventory of the things that you have. We are talking about bikes today. So take inventory of your bikes. Take a picture of your bike. 
note down the serial number of your bike. If you purchase your bike new, you probably have a book with the book, with the bike, and maybe the serial number is on the receipt or something like that. But if you purchase your bike used, the serial number will always be found underneath the, and I'm all, all underneath, underneath the bike. You see it? I don't have a bike. Oh, here's a bike. Right here. It'll be up underneath here. Jacob, help me out. I always forget what the name of this is called up underneath here. Under the bottom, bottom bracket. Bottom bracket. Ha <laughs> ha. Before you said it, it came to my head. The bottom bracket. And it would be etched in. It would be etched in the bikes, in the bike up underneath, um, etched in. Sometimes it may be a sticker, but more than likely it's etched in. So you'll see it etched in up underneath there, either uh, horizontal or vertical, whichever way you're looking. So these, you want to take note of that prior, prior before it gets lost prior before it gets stolen. Um, take down the, oh, I can't scroll down here because it's a screenshot, but I can do this. You will find this, now you will find this information in our resources under bike theft prevention right here. And it will come up with ways, again, like as I mentioned, the security of best places to where you lock your bike and removing the front wheel, putting, on, putting, it, putting it on the back. Um, using a U lock, uh, all this, all the really the good stuff that I just said. But here is the bike index, the information that's the screenshot that I shared with you. So you'll want to write down the serial number, unknown serial number that that can happen if a bike is really, really old. Some bikes do not have serial numbers. The manufacturers, the models, all this type of stuff you might want to you you want to jot that, jot down. And what it is in a picture, because pictures have pictures speak a lot of words. So what this is, this is a community user generated forum for people to help recover stolen bikes. So they will, this is a free program um, because we're, it's like we're all together looking out for bikes. So they'll put out some Put out some I don't know I don't want to call them APBs but you know some information once you say that you do, your bike is stolen they help you look for it no guarantee that you'll get your bike back but however it's a community so when you see information about a bike being stolen that's where we come in as a community and be like okay maybe be on the lookout and find it and look for it I still look for my bike y'all I still look for my bike it's been about three years that my bike was stolen and I still look for it it may be at the chop shop but um, I still look for it. I still get hope. Now, if your bike is already stolen, then do you want to click right here and go through the steps right here? But you want to be proactive and do these steps prior beforehand. Now, one thing that I do do is I just keep a running tab, like a spreadsheet format of the bikes and the serial numbers and all their information because you, when you need it, then you need it. You don't want to go fun, fumbling for it. And with the internet nowadays, a lot of things you can just store up into the cloud. So you don't have to actually keep it. If you keep it on your computer, it's not gonna help you if you're out and it, it gets stolen. Like store things up in the cloud so you can just pull it down wherever you're at or store it onto your cell phone. But again, I, I just recommend the cloud, uh, whatever type of virtual storage feature. Okay, that was that was it. Uh, I think that's it. Let me, make, let me look at my stuff here. I don't have any. I don't think I have anything else. Does anyone have any questions? Let me look at the chat. Let me stop sharing. No one's got any chats. Or does anyone have any, any tips, anything that I did not share that you feel be helpful to anybody else? Yes, Adam? Yeah, I just wanted to ask, ask a question and also share a tip. So I'll do the tip first. Um, I don't know if you guys are familiar with um, some of the sort of near field detection like tiles that people put to like for their keys and things like that. Um, um, you can, they now make one that's adhesive and you can like put it up under your saddle or you can put it, attach it to the frame. Um, and I have a friend of mine that actually got his bike back in LA um, by actually tracking that. It took about two weeks for the tile to go off in somebody's radar and then he went around and actually found his bike. So um, I, that's a plug for those and it's worth it if you're if you got a very if you got an expensive bike that can get stolen. Um, this question is um, related to: Does Bike Cleveland do any advocacy for with bike commuters? Like I, I commute on my bike probably three out of five days, and um, and I know that 
Um, some locations, stores, places like that will let you bring their, your bike in. Other places, yeah, especially now more so, are saying, no, you can't roll your bike in you know, to the store with you. And if you have an expensive bike, you don't want to leave it outside, even if it's locked. So I was wondering what you guys, what Bike Cleveland does related to prevent theft in the first place. That's great. I'm going to let uh, Jacob go ahead and tackle that answer, if you don't mind, please. Uh, we do have um, a bicycle friendly business program where we we'll work like workplaces or, or businesses that want to become bi more bicycle friendly um, either for their employees. Um, so some of that might include like working with businesses to identify places for employees to shower when they arrive or, or helping them build out, uh, get quotes for bike rooms for employees to park their bikes, but also for customers um, and ensuring that, you know, they do have a safe place to be able to lock their bikes. Um, I believe the website, the short website for that uh, info is um, clebfb.org, um, or it's also on our website uh, under our, our work and bicycle friendly business as well. Um, this, this was more for um, consumers, for commuters, not like I, where I work, I, I can do that. I, I have a, they have a bike box and I can put it away and all that kind of good stuff. Um, I'm talking about for locations that are just retail establishments that let's assume you're riding home and if you ride eight miles home or whatever, you stop at a store because you got to pick something up for dinner or whatever. So are, are, does Bike Cleveland do any advocacy or have any identification of kind of bright friendly retailers that allow folks to not, they can, we can just they kind of roll our bikes in, get what we need and, and, and not have to risk it being stolen outside? Yeah, yeah, the program we have is to serve both purposes, either for employees or for the consumer side. We haven't worked specifically with any like grocery stores on the program, but we'd be happy to. Um, we have worked with like bicycle shops to become designated as bicycle friendly and ensuring they have, you know, adequate facilities for their customers to be able to. If they don't, that's a problem, right? <laughs> yeah, right? <laughs> they know it's a problem. Um, but, you know, ultimately, if, you know, if somebody works at a place and they want, you know, and they bike there and, and they want their, you know, their, their business to be more bicycle friendly for, for customers coming in, um, they can refer them to us and we'll, we'll come over and, and meet with them and talk with them about, you know, bike parking options that are, that are, you know, very secure for people to be able to park their bikes outside or, or even adopting policies that could make it more bicycle friendly. And one of those might be, if, if feasible, bringing the bike, you know, inside. Um, yeah. Yeah, so the bicycle friendly business we have is geared towards both, um, you know, kind of the consumer and and the people working there. It's built off of the League of American Bicycles program, so we basically follow their checklist um, and some of the policies that they've developed. And then um, once they get designated as a bicycle friendly business from us, uh, we'll then help them also apply to become nationally recognized as well. Thanks. I would also note one more thing uh, on the bike index. Um, we also uh, communicate with local police departments too to check that. So when they do recover a stolen bicycle, um, to use that resource as one of their options for being able to, to identify if a bike they have is registered on there um, so they can try to get it back to the owner. I was gonna say, suggest for something in the future might be um, interesting, at a how to get your bike back kind of thing because just that strategy of how to post on social media, what to post, what not to post, where to post, you know, uh, those different types of strategies. I know some things work and some things don't, and um, I'm sure I'm sure your community might be interested. Yeah, that sounds good. Thank you, because I know that when I did get my bike stolen, I was I didn't know what to do and I didn't know what steps, um, and so and that's just me. And I'm in the community. I'm in the field. So let alone someone else who's really just a person who's riding their bikes and then they get it stolen and they don't know what to do. So that's some good information to share to try to, to let people know what, you know, now that your bike is stolen, this is what you need to do. Yeah, same thing. And um, my sister's, my sister's actually LAPD. And when I told her when I got my bike stolen, she just laughed at me and she said, I know how much that's worth. It doesn't even exceed the amount for a misdemeanor. So sorry we're not going to spend our time looking for it. <laughs> and that's the, that's the experience I received too. You know, you yeah. can go ahead and you file the, the police report. You do, the, you do the paperwork because sometimes, but it's more like, like I said, 
um, next door, different types of social media stuff, neighborhood types of communities, Strava, those types of things, you know, help. And then, like I said, the digital types of technologies for expensive bikes, they're like a hundred bucks a year when you get over with it, but they're worth it if you have a couple thousand dollar bike. Yeah. So I'm sharing this right here. I'm sharing a screen about the tile <laughs> that you mentioned and yeah. there's uh, just a Bluetooth device that can and definitely put it in your handlebars you know take off your handlebar stick it in there and put it back on that's one place that a thief will not think to look or if you um take your seat post off and stick it down in your seat put your seat post back in you know most they're not really thinking about is there something trash just want to if you do do that be very careful you find uh especially now i don't think me as a woman if I use that app and then I see it tracking, I'm not going to go myself. I'm going to let somebody else go and retrieve it for me. So you just want to still be safe at all times with the, your life. The one on your on the left-hand screen right there, if you just scroll down, see that it says sticker. It has like it's on a remote control. It's very, very discreet. It's a little black one right there. And okay. you can you can stick it inside. You can like you said, you can you can you can pull it off your bar end cap, stick it inside there, or do whatever, you know, to to hide it away and it's it's pretty decent mm -hmm. but these are good and these are definitely if you spend a couple thousand dollars and you on your bicycle and it's maybe specialized personalized to you you don't want it stolen so this extra however much it is just do it and um, that's why i say that i feel like that as far as helmets um now when i first started biking you know i had a, a helmet from walmart called maybe 12.99 or so and when I first started in this industry, you know, I'm seeing helmets for like $200. I'm like, oh, I ain't gonna never pay a helmet for $200. That's crazy. Well, guess what? I got a helmet for $200 now. <laughs> it has light <laughs> integrated in it. You know, so it's just, you realize things that, is it worth the investment? And so at that time, I see, yes, it's worth me to be visible at all times when I'm riding my bike at night. So I did invest in that. So that's just something. And I'm very bummed about your auto lock because I was really excited when I saw that. So I even thought I could wear it just around my waist when I was riding or something. But um, when I saw it, it clipped off on that YouTube, I was less enthused. <laughs> yeah. So that's a good thing when you talk with other people and you get and you find reviews, you know, because before I purchased this myself, you know, I was skeptical, you know, and I was like, okay, well, I guess maybe I'll get it. Um, right. And then I got it. I had it for a little while. And I, like I said, I really enjoyed the fact that I can put it in my back jersey pocket. But then once they got it, you know, tried to steal it. They tried to steal it after critical mass here in Cleveland. We was at night market. Um, and I don't know, my bike, so like I said, after critical mass, so you know, there's a whole bunch of other bikes there too. It wasn't just my bike by itself. But they just probably felt it looked like it was plastic and they tried to steal it. So, but before i forget also so i wanted to share with you um a lot of these t this right here these tips i got directly from the league of american cyclists from their commuting tips so you can look on the league of american cyclists website and there's a whole bunch of tips from rules of the road bike maintenance so this i'm on the commuting page and stuff like that so you can look more into it but i just wanted to mention again about uh bike lots and about carrying them because I, I wanted to just remind you about that it's really not safe to put the u-lock on the handlebar and ride i've tried it it's dangerous so don't try it because it doesn't work so some u-locks do have you know a move my head out the way so you can put it onto your bike and it can stay there somehow in between the frame so that is good don't ride on the handlebar. Don't ride around your neck. I don't know why you would ride around your neck, but don't ride around your neck. But you might want to carry a book bag. So I like to carry this. This is one of these reservoir camel pack book bags. And if I'm not going on a really long ride where I actually need water, my u lock fits right perfectly right in here. And it's just a little extra padded because it's meant for a camel bag. Um, so I got a little extra padded. So that metal right here doesn't really um, bother my back too much. But they do make some book bags or, or um, book bags or commuter bags specifically for that purpose of your U-lock. Now, if you ride a bike and you have a rack on the rear, sometimes people just go ahead and put, they put it upside down on the side of the, uh, of the rack and it just fits perfectly right there and it doesn't shake that much and it doesn't get out the way. So that's something to, keep in mind too.
that you want to carry it because that's not going to be helpful if you ride your bike and you go to lock it and there's no lock and carry the right key that happened to me once before too rode my bike down rode it locked it up did what i did to do and did what i was doing and then i was like oh i bought the wrong key i had to walk all the way back home and then i drove back to get my bike i wasn't walking again so make sure you carry the right key yes adam so one other question um i mean you i remember when you locks came out and it's probably in the early 90s um and um they were all the rage and it was a big deal. And it was said, have we had any technology since then that is more, that isn't as cumbersome, especially like if you're going on a group ride and you don't want to get dropped and carrying all the extra weight and it's a little cumbersome to keep a U-lock in your kit on your Pinarello. <laughs> so what I've seen though, when the, and the, the bicycle groups, the riders that do have those Pinarello bikes and really expensive, they don't carry locks. But they, they don't, right. They don't, leave, they don't leave their bikes unattended. So even if yeah. they stop for refreshments at the store, it's somebody there all right. the time. Right, same here. I just didn't know. I mean, it seems like it's a long time since we've had any new technology for bike locks. And I was curious if there was anything new. But there is. I'm glad you mentioned because I couldn't remember. It was another page I wanted to show um, you guys, and I couldn't remember where it is. Um, but it's called Pin Locks. You ever heard of Pin Locks for your bike? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I don't know why it's not. Oh, it's called Pin Head. That's why. Pin Head. Pin Head Locks. Uh, there it is. Now, this is. Can you still? Oh, am I sharing my screen or not? I can't remember. Not yet. No. Oh, okay. Let me share it. <laughs> That's why. <laughs> All right, pin headlock. Now this is specific locks with keys so that they have the pin, they, oh, stop moving pinhead people. <laughs> <laughs> oh, okay, I, I wanted to stop, I should have took a screenshot. So at the critical points of your bike, these are actual locks. There's, there's a pickup, it's an actual lock. So you can't take it out with uh, a regular key or cut it or here's a whole set right here for $90 again it's based on how much you want to spend how much you want to spend if how much is worth but these are all specific locks so they will lock up your seat post oh my bike's over here y'all sorry y'all can't see there it is <laughs> so it will lock up your seat post right here so no one can just take a quick release um, multi tool and open it up because they would need that special key. Um, what else they got here? Your your quick releases on your wheels. So those are some things that, of course, you would pay for. It, but it's a, again some advanced technology as you was mentioning about lock safety. And yeah, I have not used it yet, but um, it's out there. There's another interesting lock belt trees, the one Jason uses. It's an ABUS lock. It, it folds up. Um, again, I haven't personally used it, but Jason uses it on his really nice orange Velo bike. Um, but it folds up, and then it's got straps that basically just strap it around, um, you know, the bottom of your frame. Um, you may, maybe you'll find a video of that one of people cutting it, but maybe not. Uh, it might be a good option. How do you spell um, ABUS? A-B-U-S. Thanks. So this is what it looks like. Yes, it folds up right here. It folds up really small and it fits onto, um, you can fit on your frame. And it's heavy. That's why Jacob said maybe you could find someone using a, a lock, but it is heavy. It's not like this Kelvar one. Um, and then they make, so it looks like that when it opens up. Oh, uh, right. Mm -hmm. yeah. and I'm not vouching for it. I just know some people that use it on very expensive bikes. It's like um, it's like the uh, big chain ones with the uh, thing around it. Yeah. Yeah, it's, it's heavy. It's heavy. So those are um, some tips I wanted to share with you, and I'm glad you remind me about because I was thinking this whole time I was like, there's something else I wanted to share. I couldn't remember, but it was the pin lot information I wanted to share with everyone. Another resource, and I I don't know if you guys are know about the bike that's like sometimes I think. Those would be good on ghost bikes. I really don't like ghost bikes in the first place, but that's the reason why there are ghost bikes there, a memorial bike for someone who um, 
was hap you know happened right there and so but then thieves are still thieves even though this is a, mem a memorial they're still jerks and they steal stuff and so the pin locks in my um recommendation will work for those because i really hate to see those memorial bikes and they're missing their parts because some thief and stole it and so um the, that's all i really wanted to share with you about bicycle locks i just wanted to share five, uh okay one last thing that's where that comes this picture comes in as as a league of american cyclist um instructor i want to leave you with five tips <laughs> five tips so um, always when you're riding your bikes, which is for one, always follow, follow the law because we are traffic. So we need to abide all traffic laws and just follow them just like we will be in the vehicle. The only exception for us cyclists is that we can ride two abreast on the road. Cars can't ride two abreast, but we can ride two abreast. And if the light is malfunctioning, um you can run through not run you know go through the light if it's malfunctioning um so you just make sure you need to stop first and make sure it goes through a cycle and then look both ways and then go through but just don't be running through the lots um running through the lights be predictable that's the, so that's five follow the law be predictable which just means when you're riding your bike uh just be predictable. Don't be swerving in and out. I know the law states that we are to ride as right to the right as practical. So be practical. There's debris, there's parked cars, there's crap on the right, right of the road, right? So you don't need to ride in a crap, but you just need to ride in a straight line. So that's what that being predictable is. You don't want to keep going in and out. If you're riding, there's no parked cars, you want to go in. No, just keep straight. Be predictable. Because from the back, the drivers think you're a crazy person. You don't, you're not crazy right? So be predictable. Be conspicuous just means uh, um, be bright. Don't be all black at the, in the middle of the night, all black, no light. You cannot be seen. Um, white light in the front, red light in the rear, wear reflective gear as possible. I mentioned that I have a helmet that has lights integrated in it. So um, you just want to be seen as much as you can. Think ahead. So this means when you're riding, um, if you are needing to turn left, you got to think ahead so you can get where you need to be to turn left or you need to turn right. You just need to think ahead, uh, look ahead in front of you and think ahead, right? Just like you're riding. And the final thing is ride ready, which is make sure you have like your tools that you need so that you can ride. Do your ABC quick check before you jump on the ride so you don't have any problems, so you don't um, be stranded out there and have fun. <laughs>